Welcome back. We're going to continue our study of complex numbers by looking at multiplication. Now, when you do multiplication with complex numbers, it's almost like when we multiplied polynomials or variables in Algebra 1. For instance, in Algebra 1, we sometimes multiplied something like 2x times 3x. In this case, we would multiply coefficients, so 2 times 3 is 6, and then we would multiply variables. x times x is x squared. It's very much like that with complex numbers. However, we just have to worry about one tiny part towards the end usually. And I'll get to that as I do my first example. So in this case, I have two imaginary numbers, 2i times negative 7i. So what I'm going to do is multiply the coefficients first. So 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And then I have i times i, which is going to give me i squared. That's very much like what we did in Algebra 1, except there's one additional thing we have to consider. Remember the pattern of i? Well, i to the first was just i, but we learned that i to the second was negative 1. So we can simplify i squared. So really, this is negative 14, and i squared is equivalent to negative 1. So this is negative 14 times negative 1. And negative 14 times negative 1 is going to give me 14. And that's your answer. If I want to write it in standard form, if you remember, it would be 14 plus, and we don't have an imaginary portion, so it would be 0i. So it's just like Algebra 1, except we have to worry about simplifying this i if there's a power greater than 1 on it. Let's look at a slightly more complicated one. If you remember from Algebra 1, sometimes we had something like a monomial times a binomial. And what would we do in this case? We would distribute the 2x to the 3x and distribute the 2x to the negative 6. Well, if you look at my example over to the right, that's exactly what we're going to do here. We have an imaginary number, negative 3i, times a complex number, 2 minus 4i. And so we're going to distribute that negative 3i with what's in the parentheses. So I'm simply going to do negative 3i times 2. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and you have i. And then I'm going to do negative 3i times negative 4i. So negative 3 times negative 4 is plus 12, and i times i is i squared. Again, very much like Algebra 1. However, we have to keep in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1. So we have to simplify. So this is like saying negative 6i plus 12 times negative 1 which would give us negative 6i, and 12 times negative 1 would be minus 12. You can't forget to simplify the i squared. Now, written in standard form, we usually put the real number first, so that would be actually negative 12 minus 6i, written in complex standard form. Let's take it up just one more notch. In Algebra 1, we often did a binomial, something like 2x minus 3, times another binomial, x minus 7. What did we do in this case? Well, we distributed it twice. We took 2x and we gave it to everything in parentheses, the x and the negative 7, and then we did the negative 3 and gave it to everything in the parentheses, the x minus 7 again. So when you have a complex number times a complex number, you're going to do the same process. So, for example, I have negative 2 minus 4i times 5 minus 6i. Well, we're going to take that negative 2, and we're first going to give it to the 5. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. We're then going to give that negative 2 to the negative 6i. So negative 2 times minus 6 is a positive 12i. Then we go with the negative 4i. So negative 4i times 5 is going to give me a negative 20i. And then lastly, we're going to do negative 4i times negative 6i. So negative 4 times negative 6 is going to give me a positive 24 and an i times an i is an i squared. So now what we have to do is combine our like terms, because if you notice the two terms in the middle, they both have i. So now I'm going to have negative 10, and then the 12i minus 20i, 12 minus 20 since they're like terms, is going to give me a minus 8i, 
and I have this plus 24i squared. Again, i squared is equal to negative 1. So really, I have to keep going a little bit further. I could keep simplifying this. This is negative 10 minus 8i plus 24 times the negative 1. So when I do that, I have negative 10 minus 8i, and instead of a plus 24, I have to multiply it by the negative 1 to make it a minus 24. And we're not quite done yet because notice we got rid of the i, so now we actually have two real terms we can combine. So negative 10 minus 24 becomes a negative 34 minus 8i. And that's your answer. Now notice a complex number times a complex number is going to give you a complex number. What do I mean by that? A complex number is written in the form a plus bi. What did we get? a, a real portion, plus bi, an imaginary portion. If you get anything that's not an a plus bi, if you multiply a complex times a complex, and you get something different, like something like three terms right here, then you probably haven't simplified it far enough. Let's just try one more of these. I have four minus five i times negative two minus i. So I'm gonna go ahead and distribute the four. Four times negative two is negative eight. Four times negative i is negative four i. I'm gonna distribute the negative five i. Negative five times negative two is a positive 10 i. Negative five i times a negative i. Negative times a negative is a positive five, and then i times i is i squared. Again, we have like terms right here. We have an i and an i. So we have negative 8 and negative 4i plus 10i. Negative 4 plus 10 is going to give me a plus 6i. And then on the end here, we still have plus 5i squared. And by this point, you're like screaming at me saying, hey, i squared is equal to negative 1. So I have negative 8 plus 6i plus 5, and that i squared is equivalent to the negative 1, so times negative 1. So that's negative 8 plus 6i, and then 5 times negative 1 is going to give me a minus 5 now. And then I'm almost done. I now have two real numbers that I have to combine. So negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13 plus 6i. Now that we've done a couple examples, why don't you hit pause and try one for yourself? You should have gotten just the answer 13, or if we wrote that in complex standard form, it would be 13 plus 0i. Why did we get just a 13 in the case when on the other two examples we had an i? Well, if you look at this, when we multiplied this out, when we distributed, the middle terms were 6i and negative 6i. Well, that ended up canceling each other out, so we lost the single i. And then as you keep going, i squared became negative 1, and then that was a real number, and you combine just a 13. There's something really special about this case, and I want to talk about that on the next slide. The problem that you just did was really special because those two numbers are known as conjugate pairs. And this is a really special group of numbers, especially when we get into other operations. Conjugate pairs are complex numbers where the only difference between them is the sign or the operation between the a and the bi. Look at our example. I have negative 2 plus 3i, and I have negative 2 minus 3i. The only difference between these is the sign in between the real part and the imaginary part. These are known as conjugate pairs, and they become really important in later operations. But the one thing that we just saw, and that this is true of all conjugate pairs, is when you multiply conjugate pairs, you actually get just a real number. You lose the imaginary part. So every time you have a conjugate pair and you multiply them together, you lose the imaginary part. You won't have an I. I want to stress one thing that students mess up a lot is the fact that it's only the middle sign that changes. So for example, negative 2 plus 3i and 2 minus 3i are not conjugate. 
Yes, the middle ones changed, but so did the front ones on this one. It's only the middle sign that changes, the middle operation. If anything else is different, they're not conjugate. And that covers the basics of multiplication with complex numbers.